Hi, I'm Marilyn Wolf, and I'd like to talk to you about Internet of Things systems for food security. We have several basic requirements on food. Everyone needs a certain amount of food in order to remain healthy. Food needs to have a certain quality. Not only does it not need to be spoiled, but if it's unpalatable, people won't eat it and they won't get the nutrition they need. And of course, food needs to be timely. Getting your dinner a week late isn't quite what you need. So, how can Internet of Things systems help? Well, we want to help predict the food needs of recipients. Their basic requirements, their preferences, and their restrictions, which could be dietary, they could be religious. And we want to do this in as in obtrusive a way possible. We want to use sensors to the extent um, possible to help infer what they need and what they want. We need to monitor food quality throughout the entire process from the beginning all the way to the plate. That means monitoring over time as well as over the entire journey of the food. And we want to monitor at useful qualities. Monitoring at the pellet level is helpful, but if we can monitor at smaller quantities, then we may be able to reduce spoilage, reduce waste, and make best use of food based on its condition. We also need flexible logistics. We need to be able to change plans according to both changes in the characteristics of the food and also the varying needs of people. So, for example, if part of our um, shipment of bananas isn't quite as, as, uh, as cosmetically useful, rather than throwing it away, we can divert it to some use where uh, those cosmetic properties aren't as useful, aren't as important. What are the technological challenges we need to solve in order to help us with our food goals? Well, we want to use machine learning to help us infer the needs of our customers. We want to do that as much as possible on the basis of sensors and their environment that tell us what they're doing, how much food they might need, what they prefer to eat, and so forth. We need very cheap sensors for the food itself. Uh, for example, in this country, there's a great deal of uh, food thrown away purely for cosmetic reasons. If we can sense state, we can perhaps divert to uh, more beneficial uses. We can also, with very cheap sensors, analyze at much smaller units so we don't throw away, for example, an entire pallet. We only throw away the pieces that may have actually gone bad. Uh, there also, uh, apparently, is a very large market in um, counterfeit fish, as another example. Um, very cheap species are passed off as more expensive species. Very cheap tags can help us um, um, foil this counterfeiting. We also want to develop methods to treat, treat foodstuffs as signals. We want to monitor them over time and over space as part of their journey. Using the sensor data that we get, we want to analyze the state of the food. We want to recognize conditions about its state as it's spoiled. Um, is, it, is it ripe? And we want to make decisions based on this analysis and recognition. These techniques are based on what we've done over the years in both statistical signal processing and machine learning. Uh, but we want to be able to scale these up to the huge scales that we need to deliver food to the entire world. That means distributed algorithms and algorithms that pump out results uh, continuously rather than in batch mode that's occasionally performed uh, up in the cloud. Thanks very much.